Hey yo, what's good everybody? Welcome back to my channel. And uh, if you are a JRPG enjoyer like myself, or more specifically in this case, TRPGs, then you should definitely check out Wandering Sword. Wandering Sword is a Chinese martial arts TRPG developed by the Swordman Studio and published by Spiral Up Games. The game has tons of very positive reviews on Steam, and I gotta say I agree with them. I've been having loads of fun playing this game in the little bit of free time that I have. In Wandering Sword, you play as a young swordsman named Yuan Yi, who barely escapes death when you are caught in the middle of a gang war. You are saved by a powerful martial artist, and after your recovery, you head into the wide world of Zhang Hu and begin your adventure. The game has a massive open world and you can go wherever you choose and put your martial arts skills to the test. With various difficulty settings, normal, hard, stream, easy, manual and auto battles, and even a real-time battle setting where you can dodge your opponent's moves and even miss your own, the game has loads of ways to challenge yourself and express your skill. The game also has solid replay value where you can inherit loads of different stuff from previous playthroughs. The classic New Game Plus experience. You can choose your favorite martial arts styles with each revolving around a specific type of weapon. You can become a swordmaster with swordplay, or cut down multiple enemies using sabers. You could also choose a balanced approach and keep your enemies within reach with polearm techniques. Or you could stick with the classics and use your fists as weapons. If you prefer to stay high and dry, you can release your inner ninja assassin and strike from afar using hidden weapons. Of course, your potential is not limited to one of these styles. You can become a true martial arts legend and master all of these styles if you so choose. If you want to be a true master, you have to sharpen your skills, hone your key and strengthen your body using the different character development methods in the game and the areas that you choose to focus on will influence your playstyle. There are tons of interactions with NPCs across the world, and these interactions make the game feel truly alive. Most NPCs will either offer wares that you can buy, or will be willing to spar with you if you just get to know them a little. You can collect resources, go fishing, tailor your own gear, and even forge your own powerful weapons. And if you're not into that kind of stuff, no worries, it's by no means a requirement to progress in the game. Speaking of interactions with NPCs, there are loads of side quests that you can take on if you are so inclined. And I mean loads. You can also meet tons of unique characters all across Zhang Hu, some of which you can forge strong bonds with and invite them to join you on your journey.
I really like the power system in the game. 90% of NPCs have some level of martial arts abilities and you can find that out by observing them. Villagers that lead normal lives are usually beginners and novices. And then there are those who are actively training in the martial arts at various sects and they range from many different levels of martial arts skill from apprentice to competent proficient and expert and finally master A jump up from Master is outstanding, and these characters are all characters that have respectable abilities and top positions in various sects and factions. Finally, the best of the best, which are usually the leaders of factions, have invincible power levels. And some who are even stronger than that have power levels that is called Supreme. The strongest NPCs I've encountered in the game so far have an unraveled power level. Of course, enemies that you can find across the map also have power levels that can be seen by the color of their names, with yellow and red usually being a mini-boss of some sort. Well, I hope you have been watching to the end because I've saved the best for last. My favorite thing in Wandering Sword is the affinity system. Different NPCs like different stuff, and you can gain affinity with them by gifting them the things that they like. Through this system, you can spar with loads of NPCs across the world, and if you beat them, they will even give you items from their inventory. You can pretty much use this method to wrap NPCs blind, including taking back the gifts that you've given them. <laughs> But that's not all, you can use the affinity system to form bonds with a bunch of unique characters, inviting them to become your allies for the journey ahead. The best part of the affinity system is that you can use it to get even more powerful moves by consulting with characters all over the world. And while you're at it, you can even learn important life skills like forging and tailoring. A bunch of characters even have unique moves that you can learn from them, but they won't give their hard-earned techniques away for free. You'll need to have a high affinity with them and be able to prove your worth by taking them down in a sparring match. This way, you can learn tons of powerful, unique moves that you can use to absolutely devastate your enemies. I've not finished the game, but overall the story has been really enjoyable so far for me. The world is fleshed out and each faction has their own unique structure and legends like the Four Great Detectives or the Seven Outlaws. The open world, open-ended experience gives you so much freedom in the game, which makes it that much more fun. Throw in badass unique martial arts techniques and you have a real top tier TRPG. And like I said at the beginning, if you're a fan of TRPGs like Final Fantasy Tactics, Tactics Ogre and other similar games, chances are that you will love Wandering Sword just as much as I do. Also, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see me branch off a little more and cover other JRPGs and such, 
then please do let me know in the comments below. Other than that, thank you so much as always for watching. Have a fantastic day. See ya.